from Los Angeles. It's the Good as Tom Mike Show. Talk to me, talk to me. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Mike. Thank you for tuning into the Tom Mike Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No, I am your host. Write down our toll-free telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. Here we are together again on the radio. And uh, here is an amazing story. An amazing story from the Toronto Star. This is Dateline, Woodstock, Ontario. Nina Janssen is still waiting to hear what, if anything, her $30 million ex-husband has in store for her. She can't sit by the phone to wait for his call. She's too broke to afford what? She can't even wait it out watching TV because she doesn't own one of those either. Her only means of transportation is the rusty bicycle in her driveway. The love of her life took back the rented SUV he'd let her use for a week after he took off for parts unknown. But despite all that, Janssen says she's confident that Raymond Sobeski, whom she still refers to as my husband, will return to her. The money, she says, comes second to the love she's felt for him since they met some nine years ago. But just in case he doesn't find her way back, I'm sorry, just in case he doesn't find his way back to her arms, Janssen's hired a London, Ontario lawyer to look after her interests and those of her four children by previous marriages. I know he'll come back to me. He'll never find a person more compatible. Janssen said as she waited at her subsidized duplex for the message she hopes will arrive any minute from the man she married in 1998. The same man did tell her he'd won the biggest lottery in Canadian history as he made love to her in a Woodstock motel just hours after picking up a mammoth check in Toronto on April 1st. The only reason he did that was to protect himself, Janssen told the star. How can you divorce someone who is whining and dining you and still making love? If I'd won $30 million, I'd take off, too. Janssen last saw Sobetsky after their night of lovemaking in Woodstock, where he presented her with a bottle of champagne, a gift to him from the Royal Bank of Canada. Her biggest fear now is that she'll say something in interviews that will upset Sobetsky. I'm afraid I'll say something to piss him off, screw things up. Janssen said her world has been turned upside down since word leaked out that she was the third ex-Mrs. Sobeski. Reporters have flooded into Woodstock looking for details of her life and lifestyle, with some even heading into local strip joints and pool halls in their search for particulars. Some reporters have twisted my words and tried to make me look like a paid hooker for my husband, said Janssen, adding the whole thing that's left her a nervous wreck. Every time I hear a sad song, I cry. I'd like to wake up and have none of this ever happen and have things back like they were before. Three of her children, Dwayne, 23, Corey, 20, and Tanya, 14, live at home, while Crystal, 19, lives with a friend. I'm afraid that they'll break up my family, she said, meaning the authorities. Janssen said whenever Sobeski was accompanied by the two children, now aged 12 and 13, he had with second wife, Sherry Zylstra. All of us got along like it was one big party. She said she first met Sobeski about three months after Zylstra had left him. At the time, Janssen said, I was in hiding from the father of my two children. He had been my high school sweetheart, but it turned out I really didn't know it, she said, refusing to elaborate further. Another one of those stories. Yeah. She described the man she married in London, Ontario, on December 10, 1998, as an intensely private man who doesn't like other people knowing his business. When he claimed his lottery prize, she said, Sobeski was living in the nearby village of Princeton, but, quote, nobody in Princeton knew who he was. I still want him to come back to me, Janssen said. I want him more than I want his money. Life would have been so much better if he hadn't won and the way he went about it. 
I'm just a little bit bitter they took off, and we're the ones to deal with the reporters. We're the ones being harassed while he's off on vacation. One of Canada's leading family law lawyers, meanwhile, says Sobeski may be on the hook for huge amounts of child and spousal support for his two children and ex wives Harold Nyman says there is no question Sobeski will owe his children substantial child support, but his obligations to their mother, Sherry Zalstra, or to Janssen are less certain, because not all the facts are known about these relationships. The real story here is his natural children, said Nyman. She, meaning Zalstra, is going to be able to obtain very, very significant support for him. I don't know much about the current wife from the facts that I've been able to glean, Nyman said. I think the real liability is going to be for the children that he already has. Janssen was married to Sebeski when he won the $30 million last April, but was divorced from him on February 8th, before Sebeski got around to collecting his winnings. So you see, he knew he'd won the lottery when he was uh, still married to her, but then uh, when he, um, he got divorced around time came time to pick up the check. She says she admitted her marriage to Sebeski was not a typical union. The couple never lived together under the same roof, settling instead for weekends at his home in Princeton or at hotels and motels in the Woodstock area. That's wonderful. Whether Janssen's four children have a claim for support on the prize money will depend on the kind of relationships Sebeski had with them. Nyman said, why should that matter? Well, that's why I tell you, boys, the minute you get hooked up with a single mother, somebody with children from a previous relationship, you're going to be on the hook for that. That's why I tell you not to get involved with women like that. And the story goes on. Bottom line here, here's a guy who won one of the biggest lottery payouts in Canadian history. 30 million bucks. 30 million bucks. And he um, decided to break up with his wife. That's it. I'm done. I'm out of here. And he got out of there. No one knows where he is. I certainly wouldn't blow his cover if I knew where he was. I'll tell you that. But um, every once in a while, I ask a question that is designed to make you uncomfortable. And to trouble you. And uh, this question is going to make a number of people uncomfortable when they hear the answer. This one is very much uh, in keeping with a question we once asked where I said, if uh, the person you're married to uh, became a paraplegic, quadriplegic, if they had a big car accident and they went through the windshield and there were cuts of ribbons and they, they couldn't walk anymore and you had to wheel them around, kind of like, uh, kind of like weekend at Bernie's, you know, you're just kind of wheeling this vegetable around all the time. You know, how long would you stay? Would you stay there? And, you know, the surprising number of people who called up and said they would leave, even though everybody always professes their undying love in sickness and in health, till death to his part, blah, 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 blah. They don't really mean it. They mean as long as it's convenient to stay with somebody, as long as they're not a vegetable, as long as they don't get AIDS, as long as they don't get really sick, as long as, they don't, you know, as long as they still look pretty much the same, as long as they don't gain 300 pounds. I mean, there's a million asterisks on those wedding bells. And uh, kind of the same thing here. I want to talk to people who are married. Married. Okay. Because if you're living with somebody, you know, you can leave any time. You can. You, that's why you're not married. You can leave any time. I want to talk to married people, men and women both. All right. Let's say you want a huge lottery payout. Here in California, we've had them in the vicinity of $100 million. We've had big, big, big jackpots They're here in California. Because we've got 40 million goddamn people living here. And lots of them buy lottery tickets. And many times that jackpot rolls over to the next week, and we've had huge... I mean, you know anytime you go to the 7-Eleven to buy a pack of Siggies... And you're standing behind a bunch of morons sitting there going, um, four, seventeen. Oh, God, save me. You know when the jackpot is huge. But all right, so there you are. You're married to um, that old bastard or that old battle axe or whatever, okay? You're married. But uh, let's say you won the big payout. Now, of course, people say, oh, I'd buy my husband a gift or I'd buy my wife a diamond ring or whatever. If, if, but I'd be willing to bet there's a certain number of people out there who would simply go, woohoo, I'm out of here. I want to find out if you won the big payment. I mean, the one that's beyond your wildest dreams, some huge amount of money. Would you leave? Tom, 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 Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. We want what you have. Boom. But you want what we have. Money, power. So our job is to withhold that from you. Are you trying to turn the men into gold diggers then? Is that you mean? No, not quite. Like but we're poon diggers. The Tom Likas Show.
Tom Liger Show. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Tanya on the Tom Liker Show. Hello. Hi there, Tom. How are you? Do you care, Tanya? I definitely care. I can't believe I got through so quickly. Well, you called early in the hour. That's why you got in. I, I guess so. I guess so. Um, I played a lot of uh, rich, what is it, habitually, I guess it would be. I'm actually going to buy a ticket on the way home tonight. And I would definitely not leave my husband. Definitely not. Definitely not. But the reason why is, you know, I, I would probably get in big trouble. You would get in trouble. Why? Well, it's actually happened here in, this, in the state of California. A woman got caught trying to leave her. She tried to claim the lottery went and divorce her husband, and she got nailed by the judge. She had to pay it all back and then some. Well, that's if you don't have a prenup, of course. Uh... That's, well, would that count? No, she was actually married at the time, though. Wouldn't it, wouldn't it no, be? No, if you have a prenup that says there's no community property or uh -huh. limited oh, community okay. property, then it would be yours. That's true. That's true. I don't have a prenup, I do have to admit. My, my husband and I both entered our marriage with very little assets. And even so. then, even if you had to split it. Uh, yeah, I, I, split can it. I tell you something, Tanya? Yeah, I, I, honestly, I honestly believe this, okay? I believe women are with the most attractive woman. The men are with the most attractive women they can afford. Mm -hmm. And that's why I believe that if a man got millions of dollars, he's out. Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure out. Some situations. I'm I sure don't think some situations. situations. I think most situations. Really? You yeah. Don't think Unless they already have millions. If they already have millions, then why did they marry the woman in the first place? But again. Well, that's that's the they thing. They could have just kept sleeping around. Uh, they could. Uh huh. And that, that's a good question. You wonder why rich men I, get married. Hey, why? I, I told my husband if he was... If marriage he was is for poor people, I would never mailed him. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Ma marriage is really generally for poor people. <laughs> okay. But why would rich people need to get married? They, they don't need to. They can right. buy anything they want. Uh, exactly. Exactly. As many times as you want. As often as, as you want. Exactly. Wherever yeah. you want. That's However right. you want. But if you won, you'd stay with him. I would stay with him, yes. Yeah. Because you're you not, know. you're not, you're not with the most attractive man you can afford. You're, you, you, you're with the richest man you could attract. You know what? I, I, if that's the way you look at it, I didn't look at that, look at it that way at the time. I just followed my heart. But you never know. I mean, money changes people. Everyone so. says that, but you know what? I, I don't know how much money he has. Well, well he, he made. I mean, we both make the same amount of money still. But I. Well, that's that's I, the best you could do. I can't imagine that I would leave him, but, you know, I never know. And who, who knows? He now, if you suddenly got more... Uh, see, for a woman, I think if, if a woman could suddenly become more attractive... For example, we've heard countless stories of men who call up here and mm -hmm. say, I got my wife a boob job, and I suddenly oh, yeah. found out she left me for somebody else. You see, if a woman gets more attractive, she might leave for somebody else. I, I have personal experience with that. I have a couple of friends who have their marriages have ended right. after the boob job. This so. is why I tell guys to, uh, you know, if you want a woman with big boobs, marry one. Uh, exactly. Don't get your wife a boob job. Don't ever get your wife a boob job. Exactly. Yeah. I, I agree. I agree. All right, Tanya. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. Bye. Appreciate the call. It's Alan on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Uh, Tom. Yes. Alan. Yes. I just wanted to tell you that, it, that if it came down to it and I actually got freakishly lucky enough to win i'm gone yeah I've, I've been married for two years and i'll tell you that rich guys because i work for one married women to take care of the kids they already got and you know your wife's a very nice girl uh, your wife's a very nice girl i'm sure but uh, it is true isn't it you married the most attractive woman you could uh, afford well yeah i took well no i took you the didn't? best woman i could get bar none but that's what i got is the is, you know is what I can get what what would accept me and what I got right I but, that, but that this is as good as you could do with the money you had I don't know that she married for any, any money I don't make a lot of money that's my know? point you could do a lot better if you had money that's right <laughs> and and what she doesn't know the dirty little secret is that you married her because you couldn't afford anything better I and, made her. And the minute you could afford something better that's why we have trophy wives in this world the minute you could afford something better bam She'd be out the door. Along with me, I'm sure, you know, she, she, she would do the same. You're right. She'd be gone. Well, no, I'm, I'm saying, you know, I, I don't think she'd be gone if she got money. I think she'd be gone if she somehow became more attractive. Oh, well, that too, I'm sure. Like, if, you know, if her boobs grew a cup size or two or uh, she got boob job or... 
I, I, I don't have that experience, but I'll tell you that, like I was talking about before, rich men get married so that they can have the woman's kids that they divorce, their kids taken care of by the new attractive-looking wife. And just like you said, I can tell you that the ones that they've divorced, they all go out and get the boob job. They all go out and get the new car because they got to drive around and look good to get the next guy. That's right. right. That's exactly. Right. Alan, thank you. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. It's Anthony on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. First thing let me say is uh, I never thought I would say this sentence, but that Canadian was brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> because, you know, he had a wife, lives in another house, and then, you know, he holds off on the cash until he divorces the broad. Uh-huh. I mean, brilliant. I never thought I'd say that of a Canadian. Yeah. Now, second. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Me, I would be gone. G-O-N-E, gone. I've been married six years, and I would be out. Does your wife even have a clue of that? Well, I, I think she does. You know, I mean, she does. Have conversations. I, so I'm you told your wife, I'm only with you because I can't afford any bed. Well, you know, I've told her. She, she has some, because uh, I'm a writer, you know, and, uh, you know, she knows if I hit it big and if I was big and famous, she knows I'd probably be out the door. Yeah, she knows. She knows that. Yeah. So uh, one day, if you write the script of your life, you may yeah. leave her and she knows that's possible? Yeah. And that's okay. Uh, like, like I always love to look at stories like Jim Carrey. You know, Jim Carrey came yeah, to Los like Angeles he was with some chick who was with him, like, uh, all his life, and he was in struggling comedian and comedy clubs in Canada or wherever he was. And the minute he came to L.A. and became a movie star, bam, she was out the door. Um, Sylvester Stallone, same thing. There's a lot of these stories. Absolutely. John Lennon. Absolutely. I mean, the list goes on and on. You know, these guys are with somebody who's with them through the hard times. And the minute they've got money, goodbye. Yeah, I'd be gone. I'd send my kids the, uh, you know, the check, take care of the kids, you know. But uh, I wonder how many women are going to lose sleep tonight hearing about this. You know, like with, <laughs> the women we are with, we are with because they're the best we can do right now. Oh, well, exactly. But I mean, if we can do better. You're going to get laid. You're going to go out. That's right. Drink, you're gonna have a Just remember, time. the day you write that big script, Anthony, there's a girl. I think she's in the ninth grade right about now. <laughs> Seriously, she's a fan of Hillary Duff. Uh-huh. And her flabby arms. She <laughs> she is... Uh, wing, that's yeah, right. you know, she's one of those tweens that watches the Disney Channel and stuff. Yeah, but, you know, I'm telling you, by the time you write that script, she's going to be ripe and ready for you. <laughs> Legal and everything. I'm waiting. You know what I'm saying? That's that's what's in your future. So you're with this chick right now. She's like a placeholder. Yeah, I mean, she's a good-looking broad, but, you know, I mean... Yeah, but, you, could, you, but you could do better if you had more money. Oh, sure. Who yeah. couldn't? Better, younger. If Woody Allen can get some, I can get. That's them. right. How how old is she? Uh, twenty five. She's twenty five. You're twenty nine. There's a nineteen yeah. year old, eighteen year. I'm telling you. You just don't have the money to get her. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's what it is. All right, Anthony. <laughs> thank you. I wonder uh, how women feel hearing how many men would just leave their wives like this guy in Canada if they suddenly want a big jackpot. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Are you married? Would you leave if you won the big money? The Tom Likas Show. This is the Tom Likas Show. From Los Angeles to 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Tony on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Oh, okay. Button did I pressed the button, didn't do anything. Let's try it again. Tony. Hey, Tom. Larry. Love you, man. Thank you. You uh you you need to teach these men how to treat everybody. <laughs> I'm working on it there. All right. Hey, uh December tenth, nineteen nineteen ninety seven, I won a, a lottery in the Michigan state. And um three uh, three people total, fifteen point nine mil. So you got uh, one third of that? So you got five point three million bucks. I, I bring home just over 167 a year after everything's paid, right. and I was engaged at the time. Beautiful lady, nice. We got along. We were together for a long time, and long story short, you know, she told me she said, "Hey, the ticket that hadn't been claimed is from the corner store." So we pull out the ticket. I'm like, "All right, fine. You know, let's. I'll go cash it in." Well, she, we had our our wedding already scheduled, everything paid for. She said, "Well, let's go get married." You know, and then we'll cash it in. And I, I immediately, I'm like, you know, nah, we're, we've already paid for everything. Everybody's coming in two months. It'll be fine. Well, 
she gets into an argument. We get into a full fledged argument that night. Uh huh. And I'm like, you know, it, it, uh, we're not going to let money do this to us right now. So long story short, we end up not getting married. She ends up actually suing me afterwards. I forgot to tell your partner about this part. Um, sued me, went through just a mess. But bottom line She is, sued you for what? what? What were the grounds for the lawsuit? She was saying that we purchased the tickets, that we were going <laughs> to cash them in. <laughs> and I, the, here, here's what almost screwed me is that weekend we invited all the families together and I she's sitting on my lap in the kitchen, you know, everybody's sitting around, everybody's happy, we're throwing a party, of course I'm picking up the tab, no big deal. And I said, Honey, don't worry about it. We were having a, a conversation about someone's husband had passed away and didn't leave a will. In that conversation I said, Honey, don't worry about it. I'll always make sure you're taken care of. When they went to court between the mediators before it actually went in front of a judge, she was sitting there. She pulls out this tape, but they had edited the part all before that, saying about, you know, we were talking about a death to where she pulls out this and says, look, this is the party we were at, and you said you would always take care of me. Oh. Oh. So it cost me a lot of money to get out of it, but bottom line is she's still working. I got the cash. I've got a house. i got a house in Hawaii. I do okay. I still work. I own a business. Are you glad you dumped her? Yeah, I, I've got a trophy girlfriend now. She's sweet. All right. How old is she? She's 26. 26. And and when were you engaged at the time? When was this? When? How many years 19, ago? 1997. 1997. December 10th. So so your girlfriend was uh, 19 at the time? Oh no 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 no. The girl I have now is 26. That's what I'm saying. Your girlfriend now. Oh, yes, yes. As I always tell the boys, you know, there's a girl out there. She's a teenager. And the nice thing Maybe less. You can buy them breasts as long as you don't marry them. And as long as you don't marry them, they'll stay with you if you got some cash. But, you know, if you got cash, you don't have to take a chick with small breasts and give her a boob job. They'll find a chick with big breasts. Well, this one was, was my own Heather Locklear without the boobs, so I didn't mind buying that. Well, Heather Locklear, doesn't she have implants? I thought so. Yeah, but she was married. She wouldn't go out with me. <laughs> yeah, I understand. No, it's because you don't have more money than Richie Sambora yet. No, I've only got five. Yeah, I know. Well, Tony, I'm uh, proud to have you as a lister. Hey, would you take me out of old town? Here you go. 1-800-5800-TOM, Alyssa. On the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. Alyssa. Yeah, I, I would definitely stay, but I'd buy, like, a huge house and build an indoor hockey rink for my husband because he loves to play hockey. We have a football field. We invite all So of far, do you know that this has, this has split down gender lines? All of the women who've called in said they would stay, and all of the men who've called in said they would leave. I, I bet my husband would leave. I'll be honest with you. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure he would. Yeah. I mean, like, but... you're the best he could do. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure, I'm sure he would. I'm but sure if he could do better, he would. He would. But I'm sure he would too. I mean, how do you? How does it feel to know that you're a placeholder? Like you're only there because he can't do any better. But if he inherited money or he won the lottery, he's out. I don't know. I, mean, I guess I don't really think about it because we don't have a lot of money right now. I mean, now. everybody, you know, I, 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 love is is such a bizarre concept. You know, we love people because they're conveniently located, uh, right. because that we love the person we can get. We love them out of necessity. We, yeah. we don't. We don't. We don't love uh, the people because we love them. We love them because they're conveniently located. Because they agree to do what we want them to do. Because we can't. Because they're here and we can't do any better. Right. Right. And and the minute we can do better, bam, we're out. I know. And you know what? I kind of wish that you know. I'd like to say, oh no, he wouldn't do that. I'm sure he would say right now that he wouldn't do that, but. You know, because I was in front of him. <laughs> yeah. But I, I don't know. He's he he might he might just go ahead and leave. But I think that I think that I mean I would stay just because I feel like that just means we have more parties and <laughs> a bigger house and you know as as long as we're still having fun like right now we're having a blast and we don't have a lot of money. Yeah. But well, um, that's why you're having a blast. Yeah, exactly. We're having a we're having. But a let me somebody's gonna say, hey, this is nice and all, but my God, I could do much better. Yeah, yeah, I would assume because I don't. She's a nice girl and all that, she might but be an LA seven. That's come I mean. on, I would have never married someone like that if I had millions of dollars. <laughs> That's what I mean. I'm I mean, when you LA put your head on the pillow tonight, just remember you're there because you're the best he could do. 
And I am proud of that right now. Right now. Because there is nothing else I can say. Well, just imagine know. how you'll have to explain it to everybody if he wins the lottery. I know. <laughs> I know. You know, I'm, I'm only a seven. At least be my friend afterward or leave yeah. somebody. Yeah. Right. And the thing is, here's the amazing thing. You've accepted this idea. I, I, well, I mean, there's nothing else you can do but accept what's going to, you know, what what life is, you know. Right. And but, like, you, you love him and you send him all these romantic cards for Valentine's Day and stuff like that. You, you love know, him. Never, we never really did the really super romantic thing. Uh-huh. Because um, you know he'd dump you in a New York minute if he had money? <laughs> no, we just never did it because I, I, I was never like that, ever, ever, ever. I lived with guys in college and I grew up with brothers. And right. so when somebody was... You know, really mushy. I was like, okay, you know what? I think it's time for me to go because you're, just, you're getting a little too into it for me, and I would just rather screw a lot and have a lot of fun. Right. So, I mean, I got married because this guy liked to screw. We had sex while he was driving on the highway, Tom. Really? I know, while he was driving, and he's that good a driver, and I, I figured that if he can deal with doing that, and we had sex in my college library, and... Where on a floor nobody else was, and I mean we had so much sex that I was like, "This is it. This is the guy I want to marry." Yeah, look at that. And he's all about having sex in weird places, and so am I. So we have fun, and that's yeah. you know. But imagine weird. having sex in weird places with a hot eighteen-year-old. <laughs> well, there's some girls that he. You'd be having hot. even more sex then. I know. Well, he's he's. There's some girls that he thinks are hot, and I'm like, you know what? Like Angelina Jolie. He's like, I'm sorry, babe. I would do her any time. And I was like, I'm sorry. I think I would, too. Wow. I mean, Angelina Jolie, we should do this as a topic one day. Angelina Jolie is, that's the woman, every woman, even women who never hinted at bi-curious, bisexuality, bi anything. <laughs> every woman I've ever talked to said, oh, if I were ever going to do it, it would be Angelina Jolie. I, everyone. <laughs> I have had a few Pamela Andersons, and, that, but, and, and even they wanted Angelina Jolie. I, well, I know. it's just She's one of those girls. I had a friend in college that um, I think this is kind of what clinched it for him. I, I kind of I came to him and I said, this girl wants to have a threesome. Is that okay with you? And he said, you would watch me have sex with a girl? And I was like, well, she sort of wants to have sex with me, babe. Is that okay with you? Wow. And so that's I think that was one of the, uh, you know, yippee points where he was like, okay, can we do this when we're married? And I said, yeah. Wow. <laughs> so, <laughs> Listen to you. We have a lot of fun now, so I think... Yeah, well, enjoy it while, enjoy it while he's poor. I, I think that... I don't know. I think if we had a lot of money, I think we would get cuter girls than we do now. Well, if, it, yeah, if he couldn't walk away with the money and get hotter girls from himself. I know. I've accepted it, though. I mean... Yeah. You know, we're having fun. Yeah, while so you're having fun. As long as he doesn't have money, you'll be happy for a long time. <laughs> Yes, right. There you, you go. Take me out with the screaming orgasm, Tom. Here you go, Alyssa. Oh, oh God. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-866. I'm so sick of these girly boys out there. Stop it. Be a goddamn man. The Tom Likas Show. Tom like his show. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. We're talking about the guy in Canada who won thirty million dollars in the lottery and left his wife. <laughs> and we're finding out how many men would actually do that. And it's and so far this hour, every man who's called in said he would leave, and uh, every woman who's called in said she would stay if she won the lottery. What does that tell you? Elizabeth on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Yes. Yeah. Is that all you wanted to say? No, I'm waiting for him to ask me some questions. Oh, you're waiting for Tom. The Tom Likas Show at 1-800-5800-TOM. This is Elizabeth on the Tom Likas Show. Yes. Yes. You're just so rude, and you're teaching men that it's okay to act that way, and that's just wrong. 
I'm not teaching them to act that way. That's how men are. But how can you sit up there and just condone all of that? That's just not right to say it's okay to if you could do better, it's, you would do it, better. It, like yeah, that. that that's how men feel. Are, are you married, Elizabeth? No, I'm not. Well, believe me, any man who's with you is with you because you're the best he can do. I just don't agree with that. What well, I know you morals don't. Morals and values and love and respect. Here, uh, you know, wedding vows are taken for people's convenience. Uh, they are a bunch of lies, a pack of lies. How can you say they're lies? Are you are you married? I've been married many times, dear. So how many times? Four times. Four times. They're a pack of lies. Time. I'm telling you, if someone's been married, they're a pack of lies, and we've proven it many times. You know, people well, say, let's start with the phrase till married? let's start with the phrase till death do us part. Well, yeah. how can you be married four times? You couldn't get it right after the second no. time. No, uh, you know what? I I couldn't get it right. So what, they they actually probably went to go get better themselves. Uh, no, actually, in uh, all of these cases, I was the one who broke up the marriage. Why? Well, dear, it would take too long to get into all the reasons. Regular listeners know the answer to that question. It sounds like I'm just now trying to get into what you're talking about, and I, you know, a friend of mine told me to start listening to you, so right. I said, okay. But I see, I'm telling the truth, and I know you may have a hard time dealing with the truth, but it's the truth, dear. How is it the truth? Uh, because you hear all the men calling in who are saying that if they had more money, they'd leave. They're with the woman they can afford. That's just wrong. Well, right or wrong, it's the way it is. Do you not want to know about that? That's just wrong. Something happens. So you don't want to know, even though you, you you think it's wrong, but even though it's true, you don't want to know about it? Yeah, I think it's important to know, but, I mean, you're putting a value on, you, you think that money, money buys love. Yeah, well, you know what? I'm not saying money buys love. I'm saying that money buys a hot young body and that we love the people we can afford as men. You love the people that you can afford? Right. The, the woman we're with is the woman we can afford today. So the, That's why, you, you ever hear of the term trophy wife? Why do men well, want trophy you, wives? Well, why would you want a woman who only wants you for your money? Dear, that doesn't make any sense. Most women want us for our money. Well, why would you accept that as a man? Why would I accept it? I because it's money. just reality, darling. It's reality. It's it's reality. Listen to all the hit records, all the hit songs about men who are losers and men who can't pay their bills and men who can't, uh, you know, get a job. Lots of songs with women singing about lazy ass men who can't get up and get themselves uh, money. It, it, it's it's reality. I think a woman, a real woman, wants a man who's a leader, who's respectable. Who concern, is concerned about his family, who believes in God. Right. But you think, uh, well, first of all, I don't know if every woman is looking for a man who believes in God. That may be you, but not necessarily every woman. But I'll tell you what. If you, had, if you had a nice, uh, for, let me give you an example. Right down the block, right down the block from where I work, okay, there's a Quiznos. You know Quiznos? Yes. There's a Quiznos. And yes. outside of Quiznos, there is a man dressed as a large cup of Pepsi. He's wearing a costume. He's dressed as a large cup of Pepsi. Okay. And he's dancing around out there. He's a big cup of Pepsi dancing around. Now, my guess is this man does not make a lot of money. But at least he's an honest guy. But how many women would want to date a guy like that? But, you know, that could just be his start. That's not his end. That's his beginning. That's not his finish. Yeah, but you, do most women think that way? No. Well, it depends. No, they do not. He's lazy, or he should have got more of an education. He should have done something with himself, blah, blah, blah. And, and this guy, I mean, for example, Brad Pitt once uh, dressed in a chicken outfit and stood outside in El Pollo Loco. That's what he used to do for a living before he became a famous actor. So look at him. You ever wonder how many women turned down Brad Pitt when they found out he wore, wore a chicken suit all day? Well, I mean, I don't know. I just... I mean, I don't know. Well, that's my point. Women want men who are educated. They want men who uh, know how to make a living. And women are with the richest guy they can attract. Well, and men are with the most attract the woman God. they can afford. That's the way it works. Well, how come you say most women don't want a man who believes in God? What's wrong with believing in God? I, don't, I didn't say most women. I said I don't think that most women necessarily feel the same way you do. Some do, some don't. Well, I just think that it's important for us to, you well, know, that's what's wrong with America today. Well, we're not talking about what's, dear, we're not, I don't, we don't talk about woulda, coulda, shoulda here. We talk about what is. Well, what is is that... I, we're not here to fix America. That's not my job. Exactly. 
baptizing your listeners with wrong... Dear, I'm an atheist. I'm not baptizing anything. 1-800-5800-TOM. My mom grew up, uh, she went to a Catholic high school, and there was a picture in the yearbook of the girls who were going to go off and become nuns. And I tell you, by modern standards, you would look at that picture and go, dyke, 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 dyke. The Tom Likas Show. Send us an email. Our email address is my name. It's Tom at blowmeuptom.com. You got that? Tom at blowmeuptom.com or you can call our 24-hour day comment line. If you have comments about our show, you just dial this number. It's area code 310-842-9592. The Tom Likas Show.